Hello and welcome back, it's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we're playing Shifter Lines 106. So if you're a regular viewer of the channel, I'm sure you've noticed over the past few weekends we've been playing a bit of a catch-up essentially on a series of puzzles from Gubbler centered around equality cages and shifter lines. Now breaking with this tradition of hard puzzles for the weekends, um, and particularly given the Valentine's Day puzzle ended up being rated two star difficulty rating. I believe I owe you guys a slightly more approachable puzzle this time. So rather than catching up on the difficult puzzles, I went for the next easy puzzle in the series for this weekend and it is Shifter Lines 106. Now continuing that theme around walking down memory lane, you may have noticed the five that's trying to hide in plain sight by looking almost like a tree with a bit of shrubbery and mushrooms around it. That's because we're actually playing Searching for Fives once again. If you're a little bit confused or if you're not a regular viewer for the channel, let's take a look at today's grid. I'm sure it will all come fairly quickly. Uh, so just kind of a couple of things, uh, administrative things before we take a look at the rule set. So I know that number one, the um font size is a bit small if you're struggling to see it on the screen remember the rules are always in the description down below as well as a link to play along uh, there is also a setting and I actually left the language in here under visual in the link to the ctc application that says draw arrows above lines and the recommendation by gobbler is to turn it on so uh, let's see if I can actually show you what this is. Essentially, under the visual section, um, where does it have draw arrows above line? And you can see mine is actually toggled on. Uh, and this, you know, when I first loaded the puzzle, some of these arrows were actually hidden under the line, making it fairly difficult to see. So make sure you turn that on so you can actually stand a good chance of solving today's puzzle. Right, rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. That means place the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column I can't even select a column today and uh, every three by three box fairly standard then we have the shifter lines so adjacent digits within the same box on a shifter line need to share both parity as in even slash odd and polarity as in low slash high so for example if this number here is a, if this cell here is a one this has to be the same parity and polarity, meaning it's an odd low digit. There's only one of these. It is a three. Now, whenever the line enters a new box, either the parity or the polarity shifts, but never both. So, and one more thing, the shifted lines can never have a five on it and digits may repeat on lines. So let's take this one as an example. As I enter this box in here, I need to change something. So either polarity or parity, but not both. So one option, for example, is I can go, well, let's change parity, but stay low. So low even digits, which would be one of two or four. Another option would be that I change polarity and I can go with high odd digits, seven or nine. What I cannot do is shift both and go six, eight. That breaks the shift line rule set. The other thing that breaks the shift line rule set is I place a five in here. That is absolutely not allowed on any of these lime green lines. Uh, so that's the shifter line. Then we have Kropke dots, X's and search fives. So let's start with Kropke dots. This is probably the more familiar one. We've got essentially black dots have to be in a, you know, any black dots that are essentially joining two cells. That means these two cells are in a two to one ratio. That could be, for example, if this was a two, this could be literally two to one, or it could be one and four. As long as one cell is double the other, you'll be fine. The other option with a white dot is that they have to be consecutive. If this was a two, this would have to be a one, as in one plus one is two, or two plus one is three. So these would be two consecutive numbers and valid pencil marks for these crop keys. We also have the X's. We can see one X, 2x, I think this is all I can see right now. It means that these two cells that are joined by an x must sum up to 10. 
that means if this is a cell that is 2, this would have to be an 8, so that these two cells add up to 10. Lastly, there is the search for 5 rule set. And I remember from the last time that there is a little bit of confusion about this. So the way to interpret these arrows is that this cell has an arrow that is pointing towards the closest 5 in the direction of this arrow. So if we take, and I'm looking for one as an example, uh, this one in here, it's pointing at potentially one of these two cells. And one of these two cells must have a 5 within it, because that's really the definition of the arrow. It is pointing at one of these two cells, and one of them has to have a 5. Now, the way to actually place the digit, though, is it's telling you the distance towards that 5. So imagine if this cell was 5, then this cell here would have to be 1, meaning that one cell away is the 5. Um, you can see the rest of them are a little bit more obvious in that it's pointing towards the right-hand side, and uh, at least for the diagonals, because particularly this diagonal, it's pointing to lots of different cells. Potentially, any of these are actually 5. The key emphasis here is on the closest 5 in the direction of the arrow. So if these two cells are indeed 5, have I got two examples? Let me go with these two, for example. Then this one is actually pointing with the 2, as in 1, 2, not 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's all the rules. Um, I've already pointed out that if you want to play along and search for these fives with me, link will be in the description down below for you to play along. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. So I'm kind of almost like apologetic at this point where um, I walked through the searching for fives and it was so obvious that the answer is here is a five, here is a, a two, and uh, whoopsie, sorry about that. Um, clearly, there is a five between one of these two cells. A five can never be on a black crop key dot. Five divided by two would be two and a half. Five times two would be ten. Neither of the two would work. So two cells uh, with numbers immediately filled in like ten seconds. Now, continuing with shift to lines, and uh, you may have seen this in my recent solve, a couple of recent solves actually around this. So the way to think about shift to lines is, as odd as it may sound, there is essentially a grouping that uses a single set of colors. You can have, for example, the digits 1, 3, they're the same polarity or parity, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 7, 9. Now, the key thing to always remember about this is, it's almost treat this as a circle. You're either going round clockwise, or you're going around anti-clockwise. And whatever you can't do is go diagonally across the circle. So if you have a 1 or 3, the next box along on a shifter line could be 2, 4, or 7, 9. But what it cannot be is 6, 8. And I'm deliberately using color choices here, which would allow me to basically just very quickly color these shifter lines to show me the possible options rather than having to list them all. So anyway, a two in here means that it is blue. That means that these two cells are red. This is red, uh, red changing colors again back to blue. Remember this two and four, this has to be a four just to make sure it's the same parity and polarity on here. This is an arrow that's pointing towards a five. One, two, three, four, that's a five. This is an arrow that's pointed towards a 5, this is a 1, this is a 2, this is on the same shifter line, this is going to go very quickly, I think, 4. This also has to be a 1 pointing at the 5, um, and again pointing at another 5. I'm going to actually color the 5s very quickly as a neutral gray color. I'm not going to color anything that's off the shifter line. These are a 3, this is clearly 7 and 9 because they have to be blue and it's not too so these are seven nines, more blues, uh, back to red, it's not one or three, this is six or eight. Uh, I'm going to delete my reference up here now because you know, I'm already reaching this side of the grid, so I don't want to cause any confusion. Uh, let's see, where else can I go? Uh, clearly this is an eight, 
just you know kind of it needs to be a multiple of two and the two is already taken i've already placed two and four and eight yes there is the option of using the one in here but clearly there will be no partner for it so these are from three six that three gives me an order that's six that's three therefore this is a one they are a red setup this is a blue setup two and four are gone so i know that these are from seven and nine uh, excuse me for a second i'm just uh, i want to blow my nose and i'll be right back all right sorry about that i think just snap cold weather in the uk means um yeah it was just uh, anyway um arrow one two three four five six seven this is a seven which gives me the nine and the seven in here um i don't know what these are so i'm not going to pencil mark them I know that there is a five in one of these two cells because of this one, and it's clearly not this five. So this is a five, this is a two, this is a four. You can see now this is not two or four, they're both pointing at it. So I know these are from seven and nine. What else can I do in here? Not sure actually. I'm missing something obvious, probably. Um, this was going so well, and then, like, snap. Um, kind of, where am I meant to go next? We have a thing. How am I actually sort of tackling this top side of the grid? Is it just a bunch of, like, obvious Sudokus? Maybe. What is... Let me think about what these are. These are not three sixes. I'd love to know the colors of some of these things. Maybe the fives? I should be searching for these. Of course, yeah, the four arrow means one, two, three, four. This is a five. This is a red digit. This is from one, three, six, and eight. The only one that's adjacent is a six. Therefore, this is an eight. Uh, this is not six or eight. This is from one or three. One or three. In fact, I have one, two, three. This is three. This is one. That's the arrows done. Now, my options in here are well let's think about this black croc dot for a second uh, the only remaining options i have that would be valid on there is i could have of course three and one yeah all, all the remaining options one two three and four are valid it's just one doesn't work because i've already got a two so that's not a one two doesn't work well it could i could go back down to one Sleuth, just use the searching for fives. What This is clearly pointing towards a five. This is not the five on a shifted line. This is the five. That's two. That's four. That gives me color, which is so critical. Not yellow, blue, red, blue again. That is two or four. That four gives me an order. That's two. That's four. This is now an eight because it's got to be a red cell. Um kind of need to keep remembering to check for these fives. I mean, why am I forgetting basics? One, two, three, four, that's a five. This is one, two, that's a two. And we now have probably colors throughout and I just need to use that. Um, this two tells me, well, this is a four, this is two or four, this is seven or nine. They give me an order, that says nine, this is seven. This is red and it's not six or eight, it is one or three. Uh, this four in here is not pointing towards a two, it is pointing towards an eight. Therefore, this is six. This is back to a blue cell, which is, of course, seven or nine. These are reds. What are these? Let's have a think about this for a second. Blues, reds. So an option, if it's red, is one or three. Kind of works. Point towards blue, seven and nine, sort of works. Here's actually a better option. Two and two and four means these have to be from the odd pairs that add up to ten. So it's essentially one, three, or seven, nine. Seven and nine in here means this is one or three. Therefore, this is seven or nine, 
In fact, that gives me an order, or a color, I should say. So these are blue, these are red, they have to be from one or three. Uh, this seven or nine gives me another one, three. Um, I'm sure I got this. Yeah, this is all the blues. This is therefore red. These two are blue. They are seven and nine because we've already placed two and four in here. And uh, we've colored all of the shifted lines. So right now it's just probably simple Sudoku to bring all of this home. One looking at a one, three, that's a three. This is a one to complete it. That's a three, that's a one. That three gives me a one and nine. That nine gives me a seven and nine. A one in here, of course, a seven and nine. I can keep going. This is seven and nine. This is seven and nine. That's all the seven and nines probably done. No, I need a nine in here, which can only be in this cell in this box. I need a seven in there, which can only be there in this box. And then seven and nines are done. Right, I need a three in here. You can see the threes means it can only be in this cell. I need six and eight. That eight tells me that's a six, not an eight. This is six or eight. This is two to complete it. This is four. Uh, this is not one, it could be three or six, it's not eight. Figure that out later. Um, other easier Sudokus. These two, they are four. Well, this four tells me it can only be in here. And actually, I actually haven't placed all the fives. So this is a five, just Sudoku with all of these fives. I need a two in here, which can only be there, and a six. And I lost track of what I was trying to put in here. It's not one, it's not two, four, seven, or nine. It is a three. Um, I need a one in here, which can only be there. I have done, I need an eight. That's a six. That's a three. These two cells now. I need six and four. Nope, six and five. Interesting. I haven't actually placed all the fives. How about I check that I have placed them all now? Yes, I have. And this is the six. This is an eight to complete the column. I need now a three and a five. I haven't placed them all. <laughs> that's a five. That's a three. Sorry about that. Um, that is all the fives done, though. This is an eight. This is a six, which gives me this last six, eight pair. I need a six somewhere in here. Well, it can only be there. And now I need two and four, and this is sort of easy. That is a two, and if I've not made any mistakes, that's the four for the finish. So definitely a highly approachable puzzle, which I hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, hope you enjoyed the puzzle and the video. And uh, stick around if you enjoyed this particular series. Here is what YouTube thinks is the best next recommended video for you from this channel. Bye-bye for now.